We got arrested again. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that we can load from the last save. I got to do this case all over again. They're going to be like, <laughs> I'm time traveling. They're going to be like, how do you know he's innocent? He's not guilty. And you're guilty. They're going to be like, why do you even look at the evidence? What the heck is this? Get out of here. Accept decision. Boom. All right. Can I not get arrested this time or assassinated? No! <laughs> hey guys, what's up? D-Live here and I am here with some more Judge Sim. Today will be our last episode of the series. Will we be assassinated? Will we be arrested? Will our family disappear? Let's find out by jumping in, going to our next case. Um, we also have a 55% mental health, which is kind of a little scary. Not gonna lie. We're in a little bit of trouble, but we're doing okay on the assassinated and the arrested, as long as we don't get over 50. Let's go ahead and see what this case has to offer. Also, oh, are we getting bribed? Let's see what we got. We are offering you $100,000 to clear Abraham Brown and Gally Bosch of the charges for which they are charged in return for your acceptance of this offer. We promise you a luxurious life with your wife and children. Just imagine it. Wow, that's a pretty good offer, but I am honorable and uh, I'm assuming you're going to be guilty. So let's let's see what's going on here. All right, Abraham Brown, he has no criminal record. He is a he's got a positive health test and he's a citizen match fixing. Ooh, players mistakes made in the match between Frontier FC and Panzenza FC led to an investigation. After the accusations against Abraham Brown and Gally Bosch became clear, they were taken into custody for questioning. So we also have Gally Bosch who has no criminal record, is not a citizen and positive. So he's going to get deported probably if he's guilty. If he's guilty. Um Abraham says, you claim that I committed match fixing, but this is not match fixing. It is definitely a conspiracy against me. It is a sham prepared by those who are uncomfortable with me being in this position. And Gally says, this is a heavy and difficult accusation to bear. It is obvious that we did not commit this crime. That's all I have to say. Okay, so I guess we have some evidence to look at. Okay, this one's easy. Whew. This one's just work. It's not too bad. This one, just look at the look at the picture and see what you got to do. Match it, basically. All right, let's see what this evidence is about. All right, ooh, we got a telephone conversation um, between Abraham and Mitch and Odysseys. Odysseys? Odysseys. Hi, uh, Mitch. How are you? Hello, Mr. Brennan. I'm fine. How are you? I am also good. I have an offer for you. If you accept it, I will be better. I'm listening to you, President. You know we have a competition with you this weekend and it's critical importance for our championship. I have an offer of $5 million to give us this match. Distribute some of the money to your players and technical staff. How can I do such a thing, Mr. President? There is nothing that can't be done. What I want is not illegal. You will only give me some money. You will only give some money to your players and technical staff. Most of the money will remain yours. I don't want any objections. If it's not illegal, then okay. Reports we're prepared that Gally Bosch, the vice president of Frontier FC, sat with the managers for three hours and the money bag given to Gally was observed. Telephone call r records um, Frontier president Ab Abraham Brown with uh, UMCAN's FC's football player, Stroll Vex. Hello Vex, how are you? Thank you, Mr. President. I'm fine, how are you? I'm good. I I'm tell you that what? You know that we will play a match with you next week. Yes, President, I know. I have an offer for you. I want you to play badly in that match. Don't score goals. Don't run too much. Avoid tackles. If you do what I say, $1 million will be in your bank account as soon as the final whistle blows. Mr. President, it's not possible for me to do what you say. This is a crime. No, it's not. If any trouble happens to you, the responsibility belongs to me. There's nothing illegal here. Okay, well, yeah, the President is... I mean, <laughs> he's guilty. So what about the other guy? Abraham is definitely guilty. What about Galley? Galley, it said something about Galley in here. Um, it said something that reports were prepared that Galley, the vice president of Frontier FC. So the vice president of Frontier. So 
The match was fixed between who and what? There's a lot going on here. Between Frontier FC and Penenza FC. Player mistake. So that was the guy who threw the match. Okay. Um, so we know the, pre the one guy. Um, Abraham's definitely guilty. So let's go over galleys because this one's a very confusing one. I'm, I mean, the translation is a little weird on some of this stuff. This is the only page that applies to galley. This is reports were prepared that galley, the vice president of Fronter, um, sat with the managers of Penenza FC for three hours. And the money bag given given by galley was observed. So he gave money. He was the vice president of Front. Who's the, who's the president of Penenza? Is Brown president of Penenza? I'm assuming he's the other. I think that one's a president and the other one's a vice president of different clubs. So he was seen with the managers of the opposite team for three hours and then gave the money. So I think they were both on the same galley and the other guy are both um, with Fronter. Okay, now I'm understanding. It's a little confusing, but now we're understanding. They bribed Penenza's uh, coach and team, I think, right? Because then he wasn't he talking to. We have a competition with you. So he was talking about. He was talking to the manager and the player. Okay. So that's what's happening. So they're both guilty. Obviously. Both guilty. Let's figure out what match fi fixing is. What would that be? Would it be fraud? Match fixing. Um. What would match fixing be in? I don't even know. It wouldn't be traffic, it wouldn't be narcotic, it wouldn't be cyber, it wouldn't be crime. Organized? No. Um, smuggling financial? Ah, it's in here. Um, so it's four years in jail and a $5 million fine with no criminal record. He's getting deported. You're getting jail time. So... Again, four years and five million. Okay. Four years and five million dollars. You're guilty. And you're getting four years and a lot of money. Five million. Boom. And then you, sir, are getting deported. Because you're not a citizen. Um, Go back. He's a migrant. And he's deported. Boom. Don't kill us. Oh, no arrested. Whew. Well, we have like 12 cases to get through. That was number one. <laughs> All right. We don't have to spend any money. Great. End of the day. Whew. Okay. Second case. Let's see what we got going on here. We got Hendrix Bones. Or Bonds? Bonds. Uh, criminal record, yes. Oh, sanity impaired. Okay, this should be pretty easy. He's also a citizen. Insult. Oh, we finally get insults. We haven't had the insult. Uh, Frankie Hook, who works at Peaky Burger, was subjected to racist remarks by Hedrick Bonds while delivering an order. There is no discussion or similar situation as a reason. When the security cameras were examined, it was observed that Frankie was just doing his job. A person named Hedrick Bonds was taken into custody after Frankie filed the complaint. While I was doing my job, I just started hearing racist remarks from the person named Hedrick, who was sitting at table number 11. He started insulting me about my skin color. He must have seen my name on my caller ID because he addressed me by name and said words that were very difficult that I just, I do not know the reason. At first, I thought that that day was just another ordinary day when I ate at Peaky Burger, one of my favorite restaurants, but there was a difference. I noticed that the restaurant, which I thought did not employ Oh, black staff started to employ black staff. Uh, we won the independence of this country by fighting and none of them were there while we were fighting. It bothered me that he was happy and able to do his job. If it doesn't bother you, the problem is with you. I mean, the problem is with you, not with me, not with anybody. You, 
We're going to put him in a mental health institution. I think he's just racist, but he failed his health test. So what's the evidence? Excerpt from the voice recording that Frankie keeps on behalf of customer satisfaction. Hey, Frankie, who took you to this restaurant? I'm sorry. Did you call me? Yes. Is there anyone else here besides you? Yes. You wanted something, sir? Yes, I want... What I want is for black scum like you to get the fuck out of this country as soon as possible. Can you provide this? Of course. Would you like a brain supplement with a difference of $99.99? What? what kind of insult is that? All right. Do we have any digital evidence? I mean, he's he's obviously... Uh, oh, we didn't talk... Uh, we forgot to talk to the people last time. I mean, they were guilty. It didn't matter. Uh... <laughs> I'm the best judge in the world to completely forget to talk to the, the witnesses and stuff. Do you think you're justified in your insults? Yes, your honor. I think I was to the bone. I think this is what it should be. Every normal person thinks like this. What are you thinking? Were you fighting while this country gained its independence? How can you make such an accusation? I didn't fight, but my grandfather did. What? You have to be crazy not to understand this. Don't you think so? Let's hear your thoughts too. Well, I mean, he, 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 we don't even have to worry about doing this case because he's mentally impaired. So he's just gotta go sanity impaired. It's easy. But I kind of wish I skipped the dialogue with them because I feel stupider after talking to him. He was talking about he, they weren't there fighting. How would you know you, your grandfather was the one fighting? All right, next case. Last one of week 17. There's only week uh, 20 weeks in this. Oh, three people. Okay. Let's see the curse file. We do we have three? Oh, this is the first time we've had three. No, we've had three defendants before. But three ladies. This is the first time we've had three ladies. We haven't had too many uh, criminal um, ladies in this. Except for I think the one with the fraud. It's been mostly guys. Um, okay, so we have Miley Connors. Uh, she is no criminal record, but positive health and is a citizen. Adler, oh, Adler's a, a guy. Okay, there's two girls and a guy. Um, criminal record, yes. Uh, yes to everything. And then Zeri Connors is no criminal record, but everything else is yes. All right, let's see what we got going on. Murder! We got three people involved in the murder. Zena Connors, uh, which is... Oh, they're all related, too. I just realized. Miley, Adler, and Zeri. Zena, Zena Connors, who lives with her daughter and two grandchildren in a detached house near Green Village, was found dead in his room um, by his daughter. Three stab wounds were detected on Zena. Adler, the great-grandson, disappeared after the incident. Upon this in situation, an arrest warrant was issued for Adler, who was positioned as the main suspect. Three days after the incident, he was found hiding in his friend James' house in Green James Grogen's house in Green Village, the same region, and was taken into custody. Upon the statement of Adler, his sister Zari and his mother Miley were taken into custody to take their statements. Oh, so Adler sold them out. I am aware that I have become a suspect because I ran away. I'm still trying to digest the incident. I love my grandfather very much. I'm the last person who would hurt him. There were constant fights in the house over an inheritance issue. My mother and sister were constantly arguing with my grandfather. I should have predicted this would happen. I am so sorry about my grandfather. So Adler, the one who disappeared, is saying that he didn't do anything. and But he can't say that his mother and his sister did anything. But is saying that they were fighting with the grandfather. I don't understand why I'm here. This is Zeri, which is this one. Given a statement right now, the guilty person is my brother. Why don't you arrest him? I was watching TV with my mother downstairs when the incident occurred. You can also ask my mother. Miley, even though I am in such a state of mourning and depression right now, why do you bring me here and take my statement? I think the real culprit of this incident is clear. Go and question him. So selling out the son. But I mean, if he did kill the grandfather, I, I understand. Selling him out. Let's see what the evidence has to offer. Ah! This one's such a pain to do. Um, okay. Okay, boom. All right, we have the eyes for this one. This is so much work. 
Am I being paid for this? I feel like I need to be paid for this. Where is my payment? This is a lot of work, this puzzle. It really is. So much work. All right, um, move the eyes over here. All right, the triangles go over here. Move this all the way up here. Um, move this eye up here. Boom. So much work. I really should be paid for this puzzle. All right, bam. It takes the longest, but yet it takes zero like brain power. You're just moving things. The knife used in a death of Zenner. Ooh, we have a fingerprint. We also have more evidence. Um, Correct DNA. Ooh, ooh. DNA of Miley Connus. Interesting. DNA sample of hair and nail marks found in the body. So T goes to A, uh, A, which is green goes to yellow, which green is going to yellow, except for on one. Interesting, there's two yellows. I don't know if that makes any difference. Um, and red goes to blue, which it is going. But there is like one double orange. I don't know if that makes something weird, but everything else matches. You know, it matches. Um, so it looks like Miley is definitely guilty. Adler. Oh, Adler's is way off, by the way. Double orange. Yeah, Adler's is way off because um, there's double greens. Red, blue, blue, red, blue, red, orange, green. Red, blue, orange, orange, blue, green, blue, red, green, yellow. And this is the mother, right? Zeri? Oh, here's Zeri. Green, yellow. Is there any? I think this matches completely. <gasps> I think it's Zeri, whoever Zeri is. Yellow, green, red, blue. Green, yellow, blue, red. Orange, green. Yep, this matches. So whoever Zeri is, I don't remember who it is. But this one matches. So Zeri, who is Zeri? Oh, the sister. All right, is it is it her fingerprints? We have to see that. Who's? Because this is Adler's. Adler's definitely doesn't match because we have double green, double orange. But then we also have um, Miley, who has a double one. These two orange ones. So that means hers won't match either. But who has three eleven? Three eleven. 311, 311, 311. 311 is the mother. <gasps> so it, the son didn't do anything. He just ran away because he really liked his grandfather. Oh my God, it's the mom and the sister. Because it's her fingerprints that are on the knife. So Miley did it. And then Zeri did it too because their fingerprints match or the DNA matches with the scratches. Miley's doesn't. We just have that. Adler's is completely off because there's multiple ones that are off. But then Zeri's matches up green, like blue, red. Every single time in yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green. It all matches. Wow. All right, let's see what they have to say. Uh, Adler, in your statement, you mentioned the issue of inheritance. What exactly is this issue? Can you explain to us? Your Honor, my grandfather owns several houses and some land, but my grandfather said he would donate most of his fortune to charity. As a reaction to this, my mother and sister were constantly arguing with him and constantly threatening my grandfather. What do you have to say about the inheritance issue your brother mentioned? Your Honor, what my brother is saying is crazy. He's thinking about who he can blame for his crime to avoid punishment. Do you have any evidence to prove that your brother is guilty? No, but while I was watching TV with my brother, it was a noise upstairs. No one informed you about the timing of the incident. How do you know the time of the incident? I just said I heard a noise. I guess that's when it, it was processed. What do you, who do you think committed the murder? In your statement, you didn't specify who you blame for the crime. I think the culprit of this incident is my son Adler because he disappeared after the incident. No matter he is my son or not, the truth must be told. 
Um, we already know that Adler didn't do this. There's no evidence pointing to Adler. And for you guys to be blaming him, the only reason you blame him because he has a criminal record. All right, so it's murder to both Zeri and Miley. Let's see what we got. Homicide, just murder, 14 years in jail to the both of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say he's innocent first just to piss them off. He is not guilty. They're gonna be like, oh, oh wait, crap, I forgot. <laughs> forgot the sentence, what was it? 14 years in jail for murder, which is crazy. Uh, but he's gonna get all the inheritance, by the way. 14 years, your fingerprints were on the knife and you had DNA all over the victim. So you're also going 14 years. Oh yeah, same, same thing. All right, sweet. As a result of the decisions you made in the cases, we decided to raise your salary. This week you'll earn $3,400. Yay. Assassinated. No, we're good. Arrested. No! <laughs> no! We got arrested again. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that we can load from the last save. I got to do this case all over again. They're going to be like, <laughs> I'm time traveling. They're going to be like, how do you know he's innocent? He's not guilty. And you're guilty. They're going to be like, why do you didn't even look at the evidence? What the heck is this? Get out of here. Accept decision. Boom. All right. Can I not get arrested this time or assassinated? No! <laughs> no! I've been assassinated. Oh! <laughs> what the heck is this? Ah! Oh! I, I can't, it's like Groundhog Day. I can't get out of it. <laughs> I can't get out of it. You're innocent, not guilty. Oh my God. <laughs> guilty, 14 years. I can't believe I've been assassinated and arrested. Can I make it through this one? Whew. No arrested, no arrested, please. No, oh, we made it through the week. This is gonna be tough, <laughs> these last few. Um, we're definitely gonna have to like make probably we're, we need the money for just uh for this end i think just just in case oh no oh, no purchases no nothing to drain my money all right what we're into week 18. <laughs> oh my god all right let's see what the case file is all about um we have <coughs> sorry <coughs> i need a drink while this talking i think we have two defendants Hmm. All right, we have bid rigging. Interesting. Mary Alvik, no criminal record, positive health test, and is a citizen. And Henry Gez, the same thing. Um, bid rigging. People named Mary and Henry replaced the CEOs of Glenswick and Karen and Wells Company, who were killed suspiciously in the past months. It has been determined that Mary, the new CEO of Glenswith Company, and Henry Gez, the new CEO of Karen and Wells Company, received two government tenders through a legal, irregular means. The purchase figures stated in these tenders are well below the market. It has only been a few weeks since I started my duty. During this process, I had the opportunity to prove to our company and our board of directors how well I could do my job. They are also aware of the value and the effort, efforts I add to the company. In an email I received last week, a statesman whose identi identity I do not want to mention made me an offer that he thought might be beneficial to the state and the company. I also considered this offer. Yes, there might be something behind this offer, but I thought it would be useful. Uh, Henry, it had been a few days since I took over as CEO of the company. During this time, I received an email from the person who introduced himself as the mafia leader. He told me that he had killed the company CEOs who had been killed before and that if i didn't do what he wanted the same thing would happen to me he also threatened my family in order to keep the situation under control i had to accept his offer as a matter of fact i did not observe anything illegal in the request i was only asked to take part in a tender opened by the state Ooh. okay evidence 
So the mafia is making them do stuff. Gotcha. Interesting. Got it, nice. Whew. I still don't really understand that one. All right, here's the emails. Hello, Mary. I am Martin Redrow, Interior Minister of the Banana Republic. I would be very happy if this information could be kept between us. I will make you an offer that will benefit both of us. If you enter your company into the tender that will be open next week, and whose information I will send, it will be incredible, prof incredibly profitable for you and your company. Um, oh, so the same guy emailed Mr. Gez. First of all, I wish you success in your new role of the company. I hope you remember what happened to the CEOs before you. Now I'm going to make you the same offer I made to them before. If you don't want to end up like them, confirm my offer and give your daughter Mia the greetings of the mafia leader. I assume the message got through. All right, so are we arresting um, Redro? <laughs> Red Row. I mean, you did get threatened, but it's still like, I mean, why did you trust a tender that you learned about through an email and that was very cheap compared to the market? Since I took office, I knew that everyone expected good things from me, and the email I received was a great opportunity for me to prove myself. Additionally, the email came from a government employee, and the tender looked like a very official tender. There was nothing for me to suspect. If you know the, who the person is in the email, you need to tell us right now the way I can help you. The, the way, this way I can help you avoid punishment. I don't know how true it is, but he introduced himself as Interior Minister Martin Redrow. That's all I know. He said that his identity would remain anonymous and that his opportunity would be profitable for both parties. And why didn't you immediately call for help after receiving such a threat? Because he threatened to kill my family. Would you take the risk of if you were me? Hmm. This one's a tough one. Um, what is bid rigging? That's the thing I don't understand. Is a fraud? <coughs> I feel like they were the one was threatened. Um, this one's tough. Bid rigging. Would that be crimes against the state? Cyber crime? No. Organized crime? Where the heck? Financial, maybe? Bid rigging. I don't know what bid rigging is. I'm assuming they got special treatment for doing it. And eight years in jail and a huge fine. This just literally says, uh, kept between us. I will make you an offer that will benefit both of us. If you enter your company into the tender that will be open next week and whose information I will send you, it'll be incredibly profitable for you and your company. I need to look up what bid rigging is because I'm, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I need to figure out what that is. <laughs> I'm a judge and I don't know what it is. What is bid rigging? Bid rigging. So bid rigging is a type of fraud that occurs when competitors agree on who will win a bid for a contract or service. It's a form of price fixing and market allocation as illegal in most countries. So I will make you an offer that will benefit if you enter your company into the tender that will be open next week. So they're agreeing, but like, are they guilty? I don't understand. I feel like they, they just got an email about this. The other one was threatened. Obviously, it's illegal. So I think they did by just doing this. They did it that them going into this tender must be something illegal. So I have to kind of convict both of them. Do I? It said if you could mention it, you could avoid. Wait. Judge D live. Uh, why did you trust a tender? You learned through an email that was very cheap compared to the market since I took office. Additionally, the email came from a government employee, so it looked very official. If you know who the person in this email is, you need to tell us right now. This way, I can help you avoid punishment. I don't know who, how true it is, but he introduced himself as Interior Minister Martin Redrow. All right, so I'm pretty sure Mary, I gave her an out, so I would avoid punishment. Do I say she's guilty and give her no jail time? Because I can, but it says avoid punishment. 
And then to why do you immediately call help because he threatened to kill my family? So like I'm thinking, I don't know if this is the right decision. Jesus, the arrest is so high. Um I'm assuming this lower lowers the arrest bar. Yes, I need to do that. Yes. Boom. We bribed him. Um, so now our possibility of arrest is way down. Um, I think we now know who the problem is. So I think we... They gave us a name. Void punishment. I'm going to say... Guilty. But zero years. Yeah. And we're going to say he's guilty too, but zero years too. I think that's good. I think. I don't know. Please don't kill me. Please don't arrest me. Yes, we made it through. I think I... I that one was a tough one. I didn't know what to do with that one. All right. Next case. Case two of week 18. Nice hair, Gwen. Um, let's see what the case file is all about. It looks like it's a lawsuit. Um, we have famous actress Gwen Stone's lawsuit against her ex-husband, famous actor Ross Deep. Oh, is this Johnny Depp <laughs> and Amber Heard kind of thing going on? Uh, recently, Gwen and Ross decided to divorce and got divorced. Uh, after the divorce process was completed, Gwen filed a lawsuit for damages against her ex-husband, Ross. As justification, uh, she stated that Ross manipulated Gwen acting career while the voice voice process was go ongoing. Uh, Gwen filed a lawsuit for damages worth 5.4 million, stating that her career was in decline and that she suffered financial losses during the divorce process. First of all, I would like to point out that my time is very valuable. Therefore, I ask you to carefully understand what I say. Uh, as you know, my husband and I went through a divorce case that lasted two and a half months, and this made me very tired. The thing that tired and hurt me the most during this process, my ex-husband was trying to justify himself. He always made me look bad in the media and constantly appeared on live broadcasts and said a lot of untrue things. The film companies I had agreements with terminated their contracts with me. My image was damaged. So she's claiming defamation. In this process, I could not earn the 5.4 million that I was expected to earn. All I want is for this damage to be compensated. As you know, I was acquitted in a divorce case and it was appealed to the court that what I said did not reflect the truth. I demand that necessary action. Wait, what? I was acquitted in a divorce case and it was appealed to the court that what I said did not reflect the truth. So she lied. Wait, why would you say that? In this case, I cannot ignore the aggressive attitude of my ex-wife Gwen towards me. I cannot allow her to impose a divorce decision I cannot allow her to impose the divorce decision we made together as if I had made it alone. In this process, we were both damaged materially and morally. Well, I did not argue that she was responsible for this in addition to what I said and presented at the time. This compensation case also proved what a money-hungry person my ex-wife was. Um, she is a person who worships money. I absolutely refuse to pay this money. I'm here to request to take the necessary action. They seem to be fighting and there's crazy like i i don't understand what's happening she's saying that he said untrue things about her and she lost money i'm i'm i'm, a, I'm a, assuming that's the basis of this document showing that the media company john z company unilaterally terminated its contract with gwen okay a dialogue between ross and the moderator on one of his broadcasts we know that you are in the process of forcing your wife can you tell us the reason for your disagreement unless it's private of course Actually, I don't enjoy telling you this, but it's really hard to live with Gwen. In what sense are there difficulties? Uh, so I don't know how to explain it, but I noticed that she changed a lot after marriage. We started to disagree on almost everything after a while. And finally, we decided to divorce. I think there's no need to give more details. We wish you the best for you and Gwen. I hope you won't regret this decision. Thank you. I don't think we will regret it. Wait, that's it? He said that she's hard to live with? It's not... It's not enough to sue someone. Uh, in your statement, you said that your husband manipulated you during the divorce process. Can you explain this more? Yes, Your Honor. I never appeared on live broadcasts during this period. I never even gave interviews. 
but my ex-husband appeared on live broadcasts all the time. It embarrassed me to my loved ones and fans. Even in this situation, I did not join a broadcast to respond to my ex-husband. In the live broadcast he attended, he said that I was a money-grubbing person. I cannot accept this. I just do my job and get paid for it. Do you agree with what your ex-wife said? Absolutely not. In my opinion, what they said, what they say does not reflect the truth. During this process, we were both badly affected financially and morally. I stand behind what I said. I never held her guilty or any had any expectations during this process. I only expected respect and understanding from her. But sometimes I forgot that she's not that kind of person. Hmm. Okay. But the only evidence is just saying we started to disagree on everything. That is it. That's all he said. Um, Gwen is found right. Yeah, no, no, no payment. Like, I don't understand. That's nothing that... In <laughs> That's crazy to me that she would sue because he said that she changed after marriage. I mean, people have said a lot worse. <laughs> all right. We're halfway through the cases. Halfway... To an ending hopefully we can survive and not keep continue getting killed and arrested that would be great <coughs> all right oh geez this is gonna be a doozy of a case edwin daryl no criminal record positive on the health and the marital or marital pff, national um and then francis has positive on everything he has a criminal record all right let's read about what we got we have rape and beating jesus Violet Tara, who left a nightclub called Jolly Mix recently, took a taxi in front of the nightclub to go home. Violet, who was under the influence of alcohol, shared the location of her home's address with the taxi driver. Um, after a certain period of time, Violet realized that she was moving away from her home and to told the taxi driver that she wanted to get off. The person driving the taxi locked the doors and turned to a secluded road. He pulled the car aside in a forest area, took Violet out of the vehicle, hit her on the head with a hard object, knocking her unconscious. When she woke up, she found herself far away from the city and covered in blood. Violet walked to the gas station two kilometers away from her location and asked for help. During the checks carried out by police, the license plate of the taxi in which Violet was taken was questioned and information was obtained that the owner of the taxi was a person named Francis, based on the statement given by the person named Francis. And the person named Edwin was detained at his residence address violet that day i went to the nightclub with my friends to have fun my friend and i consumed that some alcohol not enough to make me lose my temper after leaving i took a taxi in front of the club to go home the distance between my house and the nightclub is five kilometers and it takes about 10 minutes by car about five to 15 minutes after getting into the taxi i realized that we were moving away from where my house was i wanted to get out thinking the taxi driver would hurt me but he didn't even listen to me we entered a forest area, screamed as the car shook, but he didn't say anything. After a while, we stopped. He got out of the car, opened my door, and pulled me out of the car. As I fell to my knees, he hit my head with something hard. Afterwards, I fainted. When I woke up, I felt very bad. There was blood everywhere. It had dried a little. I hit the road, half running, half walking. I reached a gas station and asked for help. The taxi driver had a hat on, and I couldn't see his face. Uh, Francis, I don't know what you're talking about. That day, my wife and I were invited to dinner at my mother-in-law's house. Yes, I have a taxi play. But I wasn't working that day. That day I gave the car to a friend of mine who said he needed money urgently and wanted to work in a taxi. His name was Edwin. Yes, I worked in a taxi that day, but I had already delivered the car to Francis before the time of the incident. I was tired because I had been working all day, so I was sleeping. I had just woken up when the police came to my door. They arrested me and brought me here. I don't know anything. Please let me go. I am innocent. All right, so one guy saying that he gave his friend the taxi, and the other one saying he gave it back... So I guess the evidence will give us the information that we require. All right, um, this can't go down, so it has to go this way. Never mind, it can't go that way. It go this way. Oh, wait, ooh, this is a this is the probably the toughest one I've had so far. Does it go this way or it goes up? What the heck? The, the only way this one can end is coming from this. Huh. Whoa, I'm I'm puzzled on this one. I gotta I gotta take a step back here, figure this out. Um
interesting. Cause like, the only way this works is coming from this way. I gotta work backwards. I'm not, I'm not seeing how I'm supposed to do this one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wow, this one was a big one. Okay, I, I'm like thinking in my head that it's simpler. This one was a little bit more complicated. You had to go, woo, okay. That was a tough one. All right, assault report, wound on the head during the hard impact. All right, here we go. Uh, the DNA. So we need green to yellow, and this doesn't already match. It's green to blue, so it's not Edwin. Francis, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. It's kind of orange, but I'm just gonna call it yellow. Red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. It's freaking Francis. His DNA matches. Wow. So Edwin is actually innocent. It's Francis is, um, Francis is the one who's guilty. The friend you say was driving the car that day stated that he delivered the car to you before the incident. What do you have to say about this? This is impossible, your honor, he's lying. After you delivered the car to Francis that day, did he tell you he would work on it? Yes, your honor. After returning the car, you told me that a nightclub was very busy and he could pick up passengers from there. I didn't care much at the time because I was too tired. Hmm. Yeah, we already know. The evidence speaks volumes. It is saying that Francis is the one guilty. So this is rape and beating. Jesus. So it's a physical assault. Beating is he's a he's a criminal, right? He is criminal, right? Yeah, so he has aggravated. Um, so he has four years for the beating. And then Holy shit. Oh. The aggravated is sentence is execution. That I'm, Wow, I was not expecting execution. Okay, well he's executed. Edwin, you're good to go. Um yeah, criminal record. I, I just wanted to make sure. You're being executed, dude. You're guilty. Boom. Public execution. All right. 3,600. Nice. Oh, can I make it through? Woo! We get 10. We made it through. We have tons of money. We could probably start maybe getting our arrest thing down lower. Oh, no. What do you need? Your wife says she wants to travel abroad on your wedding anniversary. The price is 7,500. Uh, do you accept? Your sanity will drop if you don't accept this. I feel like if I, I need to accept this because I don't have, oh, I kind of have to accept this, don't I? I, I guess I, we've drank so much that the price of it is getting out of hand and 7,500 is kind of like, okay. Okay, dear, I guess I get a vacation out of it. <laughs> All right, end the day. Corruption is growing. An arrest warrant has been issued for the former interior minister. Yes, the minister has not been caught yet. So we're gonna get him. Maybe he'll be the final case because he's the one who, um, ordered the other thing. So what's our arrest? Oh, our assassination is so high. Um, can we request special guard? Okay. I cannot help you right now. We only get it once and that's it? Oh, it's recent. Oh, wow, we're in real big trouble. Uh, Garibon Michi will not go home after this hearing today. If I find out that he went unpunished, you will have to borrow someone's eyes to read this letter again. All right, let's see what the case file says. <laughs> All right, um, we only have one person um, on trial. No criminal record, positive health test, and um, positive on being a citizen. Murder. Recently, a person named Falcon Rex was found dead in the forest near the house of the person named Gearbon. It has been determined that the person named Falcon Rex had an affair with the person named Helena, the daughter of the person named Gearbon. Um... As a result of the autopsy, three bullets were found in Falcon's body and it was confirmed as the cause of death. In the examination of Falcon's mobile phone, it was seen that he received warnings from a person named Gearbon to separate from his daughter and he rejected them. 
After a while, it was observed that these messages turned into threatening messages. Ooh. Upon these observations, the person named Gearbon, who became the prime suspect, was detained at his residence. I recently found out that my daughter has a boyfriend. My daughter is my only child, and I raised her under very difficult conditions. I asked her, and she told me that her boyfriend was Falcon. He was the son of our neighbor who lived next door to us, and he was a troublesome kid. I told my daughter that I do not approve of this relationship. I didn't get to the response I expected from him, so I decided to talk to Falcon. I approached him with sweet words and tried to explain him properly, but in return, I did not receive any understanding or decent behavior. On the contrary, I enc encountered great insults. My daughter was still insistent on continuing her relationship. I was very uncomfortable with the situation. I sent him a few threatening messages to scare him. He didn't even respond to the messages I sent. The next day, I learned that he had already been killed. I cannot say that I'm very sorry about this incident. He had a he had a character that constantly provoked the other person to strangle him. I saw that I was not alone in this thought. I had nothing to do with his death. I knew I would become a suspect because of the timing. But like I said, I didn't kill. God must have kept me from getting blood on my hands. My relationship with Falcon was going very well. It was only about a month since we started our relationship. My father noticed my mood changes and asked questions several times, so I told him I had a boyfriend. He responded very positively, but when I told him the name, he immediately objected. He wanted me to leave Falcon, because, but I couldn't do such a thing because I really loved him. When I asked my father why he wanted me to leave, he said that he was a troublesome person and his circle of friends was very troubled. Therefore, although I agreed with my father, I said that I love Falcon, I would not leave it. A few days after this conversation, I learned that Falcon had been killed. I'm sure my father didn't do this. I still haven't digested his death, and I don't think I can. All right, so what's our evidence? There is no digital evidence? Wait, oh, camera records. Camera footage from a shopping mall at Jupiter on the day of the time of the murder. Fake face recognized Gear Gearbon and Helena. Camera footage from the shopping mall called Jupiter on the day and time of murder. So both Gearbon and Helena we're seen there's no evidence though like how am i supposed to find him guilty when there's literally no evidence the only thing i can get is from the witnesses so let's see mr garabon where were you on 2200 on thursday your honor on that day my daughter and i were at the mall called jupiter the mall closed at 10 30 p.m we had already left near closing time i mean we were at the mall when it happened and how did you send the threatening messages to Falcon. I wanted to scare him a little. I couldn't allow my daughter to be with a dangerous person, with dangerous people. So what makes you think that Falcon is dangerous? He had been living in the area for about 15 years. I know Falcon's childhood and was I witnessed him getting into many fights and carrying cutting tools. I've seen police come to Falcon's house many times. I think that's reason enough to think he's dangerous. Do you agree with what your father said? Your Honor, as much as I like Falcon, what my father said is true. I think Falcon hung out with the wrong people, but he was a good man at heart. He was compassionate, sympathetic, and very understanding person from what he seemed. I thought I could fix him. Oh, God. Do you think your father committed this murder? No way. What they say is true. My father couldn't have had anything to do with it. I think he's I think he's innocent because there's literally no evidence. He has an alibi, too. He's at the mall, so he is innocent. Innocent. And we're going to get in trouble for that, probably. Someone really wanted him to be guilty. All right. Uh, we made it. We made it. We made it. All right. End of day. Only five cases left. All right. Let's see the case file. We have Javid Morgan. No criminal record. Positive health and is a citizen. A money laundering. Recently, Javid, who has been broadcasting on the platform called TapTop, received a large donation from one of his followers during the broadcast. This situation, which seemed normal at first glance, attracted a reaction from several different publishers and an investigation was initiated by the relative, rele relevant units. As a result of the investigation, it was determined that the user who donated a large amount had previously donated the same amount. In order to clarify the incident, an investigation was launched into the incident the person named Javid was detained to be questioned. Like all broadcasters, I play games and chat with my followers. What can I do with a donation sent? Also, that's what's the problem with me getting too many donations? I think it's quite natural that I regularly receive donations from a follower, follower who loves me very much. It supports me to continue doing this work. I'm publishing more to repay his love. All right, so because he got a, a good donation, he's arrested. 
very odd. So I hate doing this one. Such a pain. Uh. Oh God, it's gonna be one of those. I'm struggling. Uh. What was it? Boom, boom, boom. Oh my, wait, this, 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 this. Oh, why? Why are you making this? Wait, where did it start? There and there, 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 there. Oh, please don't reset. Oh, I can barely remember. This one, no. No, I hate this. All right, boom, 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 boom. This one, then that one. Oh, finally. Oh, conversation between Javid and his follower, uh, Mitch. Hello, I am. Am I speaking to Javid? Hello. Yes. Who are you? I'm your biggest fan. Laughs. Tell me quick. Where did you get my number from? That's part is not important. I have a very good offer for you. I have several stolen credit cards. None of them can be tracked. I will donate to your publication and you will send a certain portion of this money back to me. Do you accept? How will that work? Very simple. You do what I say. We will make a lot of money from this job. There's no danger of getting caught. Okay, let me set up a meeting to talk about the details. Details, that would be great. I can't wait to see you in real life, laughs. All right, so he's stealing credit cards and then donating and then he sends money back to him. Interesting. So I don't know what you want to talk about, but you're pretty guilty according to that. In your statement, you said you received several donations from a follower who likes you. In the evidence is I see that you received donations exactly 33 times. Is that the number you meant by several times? Your honor, my followers love me and supports me. What crime is that? I don't understand. Did you know the donations sent to you were through stolen credit cards? Of course not. How would I know that? I mean that these are anonymous people on the internet. What, what we are talking about here is not the amount sent to you. You are consciously sending back some of this money. I don't think you sent him money back because you love your followers so much. Why should I send back the money sent by my followers? I did no such thing. You did. You did. All right, you're guilty. What was the crime again? <laughs> money laundering. All right, so this is a financial crime, money laundering, six years and 50,000. Yep, all right. Six years and $50,000 fine. Right, he probably made more money though than that. But he's going to year, he's going to jail for six years. Make it through. Oh my goodness. Ooh, all right, end of day. Last case of week 19, can we make it through? Looks like we got a lawsuit here. Let's see the case file. Uh, request for confirmation that Vladimir Arkip is the father of the child born to his ex-wife, Casey White. Uh, Vladimir and Casey did not have children during their relationship. Casey gave birth seven months after the couple divorced. A person named Vladimir claims to be the father of the child and wants to take the child into his own care. Casey claims that the father of the child is her new boyfriend, Erling. All right. Vladimir, my ex-wife gave birth seven months after she broke up with me. This is an indication that my wife got pregnant while she was married to me. I don't think my wife is cheating on me. I just want confirmation that the child is mine. Oh, well, Vladimir, you're going to find out she either cheated on you. She's saying she cheated on you. You're saying you have too much faith in her. What's the evidence? As a result, the DNA report has been proven that Vla the father of the child is not a person named Vladimir. Oh, my God. Vlad. Vlad was so desperate to be the child father but he's not he's not right yellow green green yellow green yellow yeah blue green right there yep during your relationship with your ex-spouse did you ever feel like your ex-spouse was cheating on you no your honor i've never had that feeling casey would never do such a thing mr white what do you have to say about this or mrs white i guess i am sure that my child is early ricky's i don't want to say anything more about this uh yeah vlad I'm so sorry, but um, 
The child's not yours. Um, rejection of the quest. Sorry, Vlad. Oh, we haven't been looking at our uh, emails. I need to see if we had any uh, messages. As a result of the decisions you made, yes, we got more money. We need money because we're heading into the final week, I think, right? Yay, we made it. This is the final week. I believe there's 20 weeks, unless I've been duped. Withdraw the money. Take it and run. Oh, we don't have any expenses. That's beautiful. Okay, so mental health. We're fine at 55%. We're gonna hold on the We're gonna hopefully use some money on um special guard or something. Week 20 case one! Here we go. Oh god, we got a we got a message. Chao Yo Wong is our leader. Under these circumstances, it seems inevitable that he'd be punished. But he will not be punished. If Chai is not acquitted and sentenced today, a heavy punishment will be waiting for you at the end of the day. We want you to be a good judge and do what we say. That's all we have to say. I'm not going to be a good judge. Let's see the case file. I'm going to actually, no, I'm going to be a good judge. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Not the good judge in your opinion. All right. No criminal record is not a citizen positive health test. Tax evasion, organizing, illegal gambling activities. In a report made by an unidentified person, it was reported that illegal gambling was taking place behind a white goods store. As a result of the operation, the shop owner, Chai, was caught red-handed and taken into custody. I don't have much to tell. We provide environments where people can have fun and earn money. You, on the other hand, promise a capitalist and imperialist future and take the money from their hands. I know there's no gambling ban in your country, but paying tribute to you in the name of taxes seems ridiculous to me. Can you understand this? You fail to understand that the state is not helpful and you're just a blood sucker. Conversation is over. Give the punishment whatever it is. I don't need anyone's pity. All right, so he's kind of admitting to it. So, it's pretty easy. This is going to be an easy case. I think. Hopefully. I don't really understand this one. I'm not going to lie. We had it. All right. Evidence. What was seized after the operation? Cash and jewelry, gambling machines, chips, many pistols and shotguns. All right, let's talk to him. I see that you have a grudge against the state. What is the reason of this? My grudge against is, is against stupid people. They choose someone to govern them. And then they enrich their pockets and see them as superior to them. When it doesn't work for them, they turn their noses up and choose someone else. Doing the same thing, expecting different results. This is just stupidity. The amount of taxes in your country is pure theft. How can a gambler make a profit under these tax rates? All right, well, he's admitting. Um, he's also, I don't even have to look up at the, the punishment because he's not a citizen. So we're just gonna deport him, pretty easy. Get the heck out of here. Deported. Easy case. Whew. Not bad for our first case. Did we make it through? We did. Whew. All right. Two more cases to go. That was a quick case. I'm okay with that. Dude, close your eyes. Wait, why? Way too open for me. All right. This is Sheldon. Um. Oh my. Whoa. Those. Those charges. This is the. This is probably our worst criminal so far. Child abuse, beating, and rape. Jesus. Um, he is no criminal record, positive health test, and a, is a citizen. Recently, Catherine Bianca took her daughter, Bloom Bianca, to the playground. Catherine, tired of playing with her daughter in the park, sat on a bench. She lost contact with her daughter while sitting in the, on the bench. Um, Catherine, who searched for her daughter for a while, notified the police when she could not find her daughter. As a result, the search is made by police. Bloom is located in the location close to the park. Her clothes were torn and she was unconscious. As a result of further investigation, security records were found. It was determined in these records that Bloom was forcibly abducted by a person named Sheldon Werner. After long efforts, this person was caught and taken into custody. Bloom, I was playing in the park with my mom. I saw a man looking at me. He looked like my father. He called me. I missed my father so much. I miss him so much since he died. I went to my father but he was not my father. The man grabbed me by the arm, covered my mouth. I couldn't scream at all. I saw my mother calling me, but I couldn't shout. I was so scared. He took me to the forest and hit me. I was so scared it hurt. I fell to the ground. I cried, but no one heard me. I don't remember anything else. I am so afraid. What a murder. 
Murder him. Execution. That's what we're doing. I lost my husband two years ago. Bloom hasn't gotten over her father's death yet. I shouldn't have left her alone. I turned my head for a moment and there was bl no Bloom. I called and searched and I couldn't find it. Uh, I am really sad. Please give that man the harshest punishment. He must pay for what he did to my daughter. Sheldon, that girl came to me shouting, Daddy, I thought she liked me. I couldn't tell she was a child. She looked very mature for her age. Oh, can we just... Guilty. She wanted to go into the forest with me. She grabbed my hand and pulled me into the forest. I told her to stop, but she said that if I don't follow, she will scream. I had to go. My intention was not to harm her. I just didn't want to get into trouble. I told her to leave me when she went to the forest together. She refused. I pushed her to let go of my hand, and she hit her head on the ground. I got scared and ran away because I thought she was dead. I didn't do anything to her. Okay. Ah! Oh, not this one. It's such a pain. God, this is a complicated one, isn't it? I feel like they're getting a little bit tougher as we go. Um... How are we gonna do this? I gotta think about this one. Okay, we'll move these up. Okay. This one's a freaking crazy complicated one. This one's a little bit more, a lot tougher. All right, now we gotta figure out what we're doing next. Um, gotta kind of get rid of some of these things. There we go. All right, this is a lot easier now. Woof. Sounds a toughie. <laughs> I like how everyone in this courtroom is waiting for me. I'm playing a puzzle game. <laughs> They're just coughing like, what is this guy doing? What is he doing? All right, let's look at the evidence. Uh, assault report, wound on the head area, to heart impact, bone fracture due to impact. All right, here, this is um, evidence. This is for the rape. Um, and there's also digital evidence. Yellow, green, green, yellow, yellow, green, yellow, green, green, yellow, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. He's guilty. That's all I need to know. There's also digital evidence, camera records. Face recognized, Sheldon Warner, and he's carrying her. Yeah. Hmm. So you're guilty. I mean, in your statement, you said you didn't realize she was a child. How can someone calls you father not be a child? Don't expect us to believe that. Your honor, I'm telling you what happened. It's up to you whether to believe it or not. I mean, I don't believe it. Why would you want to go to the forest with a child? I am surprised too. I did not expect that. When she insisted, I had to go. I see. Okay, well, he, what, what were the charges? We had three different charges, right? This one's gonna be a doozy for me to remember. Um, child abuse, beating, and rape. Um, so we had 24 years. Is he, a, is he, damn it. I really wanted him to be a criminal. <laughs> I really wanted him to be a criminal. God dang it. Um, so 16 or 18, Oh, child abuse and this one. 42 years in jail right now, right? 42 years, child abuse. Yeah, and now we just have beating. So 42, 42 years. And then we have assault. Beating is another two years. So two years, 44 years. Okay, easy. Get out of here. Guilty. 44 years. All right, going into our last case, I believe. No, we we're getting assassinated again. No. We've been assassinated again. <laughs> Load from last save. Um, can we, obviously we know this case. Can we request special guard? Oh, yes, we can. Oh, beautiful. And we're gonna offer a bribe too. No, we can't do the bribe, but we will get our assassination down. Thank God. Oh my God. And I have to see this piece of scum again. 44 years, boom, get out of here. Oh. Uh, 
Thank God. We didn't get assassinated. We made it! One more case! I smacked my microphone too. This is it. End of day. Former interior minister was caught. Oh, we got Martin! Was brought to the country. A trial is expected to be in the coming days. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Martin. Let's see the case file. This is a big case. Martin Redrow. No criminal record. Positive on health and is a citizen. Corruption. Incitement to murder. Taking part in organized criminal activities. It was claimed in the statements of different defendants that Martin was involved in various crimes during his time as interior minister. As a result of the investigations, it was determined that Martin used many police officers and intelligence agents to take part in various crimes. In this way, it is claimed that he established the organized crime gang, popularly known as the Mafia, and carried out its activities. So he's the mob guy. With the arrest warrant issued for Martin, it was understood that he was abroad and he was caught during the operation and brought to Banana Republic. So he did escape. Interesting. Um, I don't know where to start, but I think it's time for some things to come to light. What can a person do in the face of all this evil? Yes, I ordered the killing of company CEOs. They did not accept our offers. Yes, I also managed to capture the cartel and silence them into prison. Because now, because now they were making my job difficult. Stupid Carlos blew up the parliament to punish me. Because he knew that there were MPs who supported me, he wanted to scare them. As a matter of fact, it worked. They promised that if I eliminated the prime minister, they would replace me. I gave the man I trusted the most to this job, but they deliberately had him caught. That was the first time I realized that there were people in my organization who were digging my grave. As a matter of fact, later they revolted and the people and this they revolted the people and dismissed me from my position. I guess that's it. Oh wow. He's kind of just admitting to everything. I mean, I guess there's a lot of evidence, right? Is he trying to get sympathy from me? I don't know. We'll see what he has to say. But we do have some evidence that we have to figure out. And then this one goes up this way. Boom. What's our evidence? Um, information about mafia members and plans of past actions. All right, everything points to Red Row. We have fraud. We have uh, Jamal, Drake, Freddie, Francis, Winston, Mike, like a conspiracy board. Those who were raided on Martin Redrow's house. Money and cocaine, it looks like. $28 million worth of cash, gold, and... Oh, gold and jewels. Never mind. Uh, those who were raided. Also, many unlicensed pistols and rifles. All right, let's talk to them. The MP MPs you mentioned in your statement who supported you, who are they? You've already caught one. I can't name the others. From where? You've already confessed your guilt, although there are some inconsistencies. It's not my life that matters. There are still people I love in this life and I cannot afford to hurt them. I just know that I just know that the person is from the ruling party. Isn't the man you trust the most famous police officer who leaves with roses? Did you have anything to do with his death? No, even though Roderick was a psychopath, I loved him and he was one of my trustworthy men. I think it was the work of fraud and others within the organization. You were given a very important task to serve the people and you abused your position. You betrayed the people and you know that the punishment for this will be very severe. Do you regret all that you've done? I have no regrets. This is Banana Republic. The reason for corrupt governments is for people without virtue. I have nothing further to say, your honor. Okay. All right, so he has, he's guilty, obviously. Um, he has corruption, incitement to murder and taking part in organized criminal activities. So corruption, which would be crimes against the state, is 10 years and a $10 million fine. So just for corruption, he has incitement to murder and taking part in organized crime. So 10 years, 10 million. Should be pretty easy to remember. Crimes, um, organized crime. Uh, taking part, the sentence is 16 years in jail, so it's up to 26. Taking part in organized crime, right? All right, and now he has incitement to murder homicide crimes oops so right now he's up to 16 he has 16 years 26 years and then incitement to murder wait oh incitement to murder is not here oh crimes of instigation incitement to murder eight years so he doesn't have a criminal record right so that would be 34 years in jail if i remember right 
Let's make sure. No criminal record. Okay. So we have crimes against the state corruption. 10 years, $10 million fine. 10 years, $10 million fine. 10 years, $10 million fine. Then incitement to murder, which is eight. So it's 18 years, 10 million. 18 years, 10 million. And then 16 years in jail. So that's 34. 34 and 10 million. He's guilty. 34 years, right? Yeah. And 10 million. I think. I have to go check. <laughs> it's so many numbers, so many crimes. Um, so 10 million. All right, let's go back out. Hopefully that saves. 16 years. So we got 16, 26, and then incitement to murder. Wait, oh no, we were wrong. 24. Wait, oh, 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 oh no, this is murder. I'm dumb. Eight, eight years. 18. Thirty-four. Yeah, I was right. Thirty-four, ten million. All right. Hopefully, it held our things. No. Thirty-four years, ten million. There's a lot to know in this game. Ten million dollars. Boom. All right. Is it a decision? We're up to four thousand. We made money. Did we get assassinated? No. Did we get arrested? No. We made it. Is that it? Oh, we get to withdraw money? Is there more? Wait, I thought we were done. Is there more? Is there more? There's more cases! I didn't know there was more cases! <laughs> this isn't the last episode! <laughs> I was told that there was 20, year, 20 weeks. Okay, I lied. <laughs> I uh, lied, apparently. I lied. So, there's more. <laughs> I thought I was getting to the end. <laughs> so, I've been lied to. Just like a lot of uh, the people I was prosecuting. So, I don't know how many weeks are in this game. So, we're in the unknown. But, that was four weeks worth of cases. I don't know how much is left, but we'll do one final episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far. Um, psych on that final episode. Uh, if you guys are enjoying, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye!